I'm back again this week uh, on, the last, on, the, on the teaching, Knowing God Lessons. Uh, last week, we just had an introduction about God and what he plans for man. And, and then we also try to see uh, the traditional way of teaching the word of God and then the chronological way. Uh, we saw that God has a plan for man, even before the beginning. We are back again today. This week, we are going to now take the second lesson. Before then, shall we pray? Father, we are so grateful unto you because there is power in your word. When your word is sent forth, it never returns back to you for well. It accomplishes what it is sent to do. Just like the way it is impossible for the rain to fall and the ground will not get wet, so it is with your word. I pray today, as we continue this week, please, Lord, give us a clarity that your word will minister healing, minister deliverance, understanding, clarity to as many that we hear. The Holy Spirit, who is the great teacher, I submit to you, take charge, do the, this teaching while I follow. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. As I said, we are back again this week. And then we are continuing with our teaching on the Knowing God lessons. Today's lesson is God is eternal and the Bible is his message to all people. Our God is eternal and then the Bible, who is the message of God to his people. And if this message is given to all people, there's no only a specific set of people that the Bible is meant for. The Bible, God's message, which is God's message, is to all people. One thing I want us to know from the onset from this is our God is a communicator. It is very, very obvious that he wants us to know him. And he wants us to know the truth. How can we know God? How can we know the truth about God without his word? So God is a communicator. And how did he communicate? God as a communicator that wants us to know him, that wants us to know the truth, communicate in his word. When we read in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, we discover that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So when we take, try to talk about God being a communicator, we discover that in the book of Genesis alone, we see God speaking 69 times. The phrase God said is used 25 times in the book of Genesis alone. And then the Lord said is used 18 times. And then the word, the phrase he said, meaning referring to God, it is used 26 times. So in the book of Genesis alone, when we take a quick research, we discover that there is 69 times that God is communicating in the book of Genesis alone. Just by the very fact that God has given the fit to communicate to man, it means that God wants man to know the truth about him. The Bible, God speak, God communicate to us by no other means than the word, than the Bible. For it was all initiated by him for the Bible to be written. It was God who authored the Bible and not man. Though he used man, but he gave men the revelation. Over the period of 1,600 years, the word of God was written. 
God used, God chose 40 men from all walks of lives to write the 66 books of the Bible we have today. Proving to us that he is a communicator. God want, God communicate. God wants us to understand what he wants us to do. God is a communicator. He, he doesn't communicate what is not helpful, what is lie. He communicates the truth. And so God is a communicator. He wants us to know the truth. God choose. Who God choose? God choose he want, the people he wanted them to write the Bible. And so he inspired them to the power of the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. This man, we are from all walks of life. From Amos, the fig tree picker, to look the doctor. There were uneducated fishermen. There was Paul, a well-educated Pharisee. And Moses, who was educated in Pharaoh's palace, in the, in the palace of Pharaoh. But even though there were such a variety of writers who were writing to different people, of different culture, at different time, still the message of God's word is completely unified from one end to the other. Take a look and see the author of the Bible. In fact, God used people from different culture, different background, different sort of, some of them we are educated, some of them we are not. But what matters here is that God inspired them. And every author in the Bible handled a particular audience, addressed a particular people, a particular culture. Know that they sat in the same room and wrote it, different setting. But again, God inspired them. God gave them the ability, what he wanted them to write. This is still proving to us that God is a communicator. Please take this example. And so a husband and wife that live together in one room, but they don't communicate. How would they live? Or parents and children that live in the same house, they don't, they don't communicate. How would they live? So God, from the onset, wanted man to know the truth. And so God served as a communicator. He communicated. And how did he communicate? Through the Bible. He inspired this man. Remember I said in the Bible, it took 1,600 years. For this Bible to be written. He used 40 different men. To write the 66 books of the Bible we have today. As a, what is the essence? He wants to communicate. He communicates to man. And that's so you find these people from different ways. From different walks of life. From different backgrounds. But again, when you read the Bible, it is unified. There's no fraction. There's no, there's no confusion in the Bible. It's so unique. It's perfect. It's inspired. We may have, power, we have errors in different versions, but the errors is not from the word of God. It's because of translation errors and all of that. In God's agenda, there's no error. God does not make any mistake. And so all that he wanted man to do, and all that he wanted man to know, God communicated. And he, he did that through the word by inspiring men to write the Bible. And the reason is because God is omniscient, omniscient. A, wo a wise God, the almighty God, is the author. He knows everything. He knows what will be man's need. He knows. And therefore, he communicated that. God, in, in sovereignty, as omniscient God, author his word. And God, in sovereignty, and, and uh, being an omnipotent God, preserves it. So he's omniscient God, he author it. His omnipotent God, he preserved God. There is power in the word of God. There is definitely validity of this. There is validity of this. And I want to say this. And, and each of the writers were writing to a specific people under a, under a certain circumstances and during a certain, a certain period and within a certain culture. But you know what? The Bible addressed every aspect of man's life. There is, no, there is no any aspect of man's life that the Bible does not address. 
So, but ultimately, it is God who inspired each of them to write, as I said already. He inspired them to write what he, they, he wanted them to write. None of the author of the Bible engineer or is the source of the Bible. No, God chose them through. God inspired them to write what he wanted them to write. And so he put them together. And this author, this one sitting there writing and they write and it brought together as a complete revelation of God. What God wants man to know. What God has planned for the entire mankind and to live the Christian life. So God, in his sovereignty power, altered the Bible through using men by the power of the Holy Spirit as a communicator. So he wants man to, to know him. Because if you don't know God, remember last week we talked about Christian life being a relationship. And you can't know somebody closely if you don't have a relationship, if you don't have a close relationship with him, you can't have that relationship if you are not, you don't know that person deeply. So how can man have a relationship with God without knowing him? And how can man know God? It's through his word. And that's why he communicated through using these men from different walks of lives to write the Bible. So back to our target diagram. God has a, uh, has a, 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 a solvent plan. He has a plan already mapped up. He put his word together as a complete revelation. What he is like. As he revealed himself through the course of unfolding of his internal plan. Internal plan. Who God is. We only know that through the Bible. So when we teach through the word of God, and then we are laying, when we teach through the word of God chronologically, as a building block, progressively, we are laying an important foundation that needs to be followed by Christians. So the people who hold you will be clear. And they'll have a right belief. They'll have a good value. And then their behavior will be appropriate. But most Bible teaching today focusing on beliefs, value. But most Bible today focusing on belief and value and, and on behavior. But the level is shallow because the understanding of who God is is not really there. Now, when we do this, there's three very important things. Number one, the view of the Bible will be clear as, as God instructed book. When we follow it chronologically. Because God as a communicator has laid down. Number two, live the Christian life as a religion. Remember, I want to make a very important point here. The mistake many people are making today, they see the Christian life as a religion. But remember last week we talked about the Christian life as a relationship. When the Bible is not followed chronologically, when the Bible, we don't understand who God is and what the truth is trying to communicate. You see, we have misunderstanding about God and what he's like. In fact, many Christians don't really understand who God is. So that's the danger of the traditional way of teaching the Bible. But when we understand God through his word as a communicator, who he is and what he has planned the Christian life to be the entire unfolding word of God. When we understand, have that deep knowledge, our understanding of him will be very, very, very clear. As we all know, there are many misconceptions about God, as I said last week. We are still, in fact, even this second lesson, we are trying to still lay more foundation, more, more to have a clarity about who God is. He referred to us as, uh, we, people see God as a man, that man upstairs there, that man far away. So people view him as this distant deity that has great power, great power that he, 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 he you know, you know, he controls the whole world. And so we see like we cannot even approach him. That's a big error. 
Some view him as a scholar of their phone. Most people view God uh, uh, the, uh, as somebody that's going to determine by their circumstances. So people view God as if, as if, uh, uh, yeah, this God sometimes he he doesn't care about me. No, people generally have a question about God. Does God really exist? And that's a question. When we know God very well, we know that there's no a second that God will fail to exist. And so because of lack of understanding who God is, we have this question, does God really exist? Where did he come from? What can I, what can he do? Is there anything that God can do? Does he really absolutely have absolute authority over all the earth? You see people asking that question. Is God really alive? Is he really know, does he know what I'm passing through? It's lack of knowing God. It's lack of knowing God. Does he really care about the human race? You hear people asking questions like that. How can a good God allow such suffering and pains to happen to us? You hear people asking that question. How could a good God allow his children to be abused? We hear all sorts of questions. All of these are signs that we don't truly know God. Although as human beings, we can ask those questions. But tell, let me tell you, as we, have say, as we said last week, there's no second that God doesn't care for his children. There's no minute. He cares for us. He has a plan. He has a purpose. Even among Christians, we had this question being asked. I mean, people that have been truly trusted Christ as a Savior, they are still having this misconception about God. Does he care? Is he aware of my problem? Is he aware of what I'm passing through? And all of that. You hear question upon question upon question. But remember, as I said today, our lesson today is God is eternal. And the Bible is the message to all people. And we saw God as a communicator. So God communicates to us through the Bible. This isn't God's fault. No. Because God has revealed everything about him to us in the Bible. Whatever God wants man to know about him, about the Christian life, about salvation, has been made known in the word of God. So God has not hidden anything to us. Perhaps what God does not reveal, if, if there's anything that God does not reveal in the Bible, it means that God doesn't want us to know it. But of course, when we meet there, we face to face, we're able to know. But whatever God wants man to know as a communicator, communicator has been made known in the scripture. I believe that as we continue uh, to study this, the question of who God is, what is he really like, and what does that mean to our daily life, will be made clear. As we continue, as we continue to unfold these studies every week, we're able to know clearer and deeper who this God is. What are his plans? What did he desire? What do you want us to do to live the Christian life? We're able to see it clearer. As we study through the Old Testament, God's nature and character will be revealed. We are going to see God's nature and character in a clearer way. To the Old Testament. The way he is direct to the events that are recorded in the Bible. We are going to see more of God, who he is, what he has revealed, what are his plans are. We are going to see it as we continue to study the word of God through these lessons. He truly wants us to know him and he truly wants us to have a close intimate relationship with him. Let read Jeremiah. I want to read Jeremiah, uh, and then I want to read Jeremiah through, uh, uh, through Amplified Version. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter number 9. Jeremiah 9. We are going to read Jeremiah chapter 9, and then we are going to see what the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Yeah. 
Jeremiah 9, verse, verse 23 and then 24. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and then verse 24. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast on his wisdom, or the strong man boast in his strength, or the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For this is, for, for in this I delight, declare the Lord. So, God through Jeremiah, through Prophet Jeremiah spoke and, and want us to understand that, look, he delights on us knowing him. He delights on us knowing him. In fact, I wasn't reading this from, from, the, from, from Jeremiah, from, from Amplified Version of the Bible. Jeremiah 9, 23 and then 24. The Amplified Version put it clear. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise and the skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and skills. Let not the mighty or the powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power. Let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory and boast in his temporary satisfaction and earthly riches. But let him who glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, personally and practically, directly discerning and recognizing my character, that I am the Lord who practice loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, says the Lord. So, the Bible makes us to understand that let him that will boast, let him that will glory, let him will glory that he knows the Lord. Let everything, your glory, your, your, your boasting, be that you have a true knowledge of who God is. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. I want us to read it again. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Before there was anything, there was God. Before the very beginning, God was there. In the very beginning, he created. So he existed before he started the creation. God already existed before he began the work of creation. Later in Psalm chapter 41 verse 1, God reviewed that from God reviewed this from, from his perspective in the land of all that he has reviewed uh, in, in, the, in the scripture. God reviewed also that he's from the entirety. Before the, begin, before, the, before the beginning, God existed. And so he, he ushered in the work of creation. There was never a time God didn't exist. Not at all. In Psalm chapter 90, verse 2, there was never a time when God did not exist. There will never be a time when God will cease to exist. So before God started the work of creation, he existed. And he will continue to exist. There will never be a time when God will cease to exist. So when Christians begin to say, God has is God really alive? If he does, why is he allowing this to happen? God will never cease to exist. Believe you me, if God ceases to exist even for one second, the world is collapsed. The world will collapse. So God existed even before the beginning. And he will continue to exist. He will never cease to exist. So when you are passing through weather difficulty, understand that God is there. He is aware. He sees. He knows. He is a solution. Don't give up. Don't feel as if God is not there. He is there. So we have to understand this very clearly so that it will add meaning to our studies. God is eternal. 
Because God is eternal. He existed before there was any creation. God is eternal. So he existed before the world of creation. And we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But he existed before the world of creation began. Therefore, we know that we know that he is always he's also complete, independent of anyone for anything. If God existed from before the beginning, before the world of creation, he is complete, he's self-sufficient. He doesn't need any help. He doesn't need any help because he's the source of all things. He doesn't need air to breathe, food to eat, water to drink, night time to sleep, light time or space. God doesn't need this. Thing. He's a self-sufficient God. God self-existed. He exists by his own power. Nobody brings about God's existence. He's self-sufficient. He existed by his same power. So nobody is the beginning. It's God. Nobody contributed to God's existence. Not at all. He existed before the world existed, before man was created. So we have to understand this clearly. So just pause a bit. I have a clear picture a bit. Just meditate and see how God, how big God, how sufficient, how, how, how God is enough. We need him to exist, but he doesn't need us to exist. Not at all. So how do we have that clear knowledge about God? That he is eternal, he is self-sufficient. The ways in which we are de dependent are too numerous to come, but God does not need any single thing to exist. We need things to exist. We need air to breathe. We need food to eat to live. We need sleep. We get tired. But God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need any of these things. He is the source of everything. God does not have a body and he does not have flesh. In fact, in John chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible says, God is spirit. Those that will worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. And so, God is a spirit. He doesn't have a physical body. Although God is a spirit, this doesn't, does not make him in, 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 in personal force. Not at all. He's a spirit being with his own personality. He has his mind. He has his will. And more importantly, in John chapter 4, verse, in first John chapter 4, verse 7 through verse 8, the Bible says God is love. This doesn't say that he, ha he has love, but he's love. He is love. He manifests love. He said that God is love. This means that there's nothing that he can do or you or he allowed to come to our lives that is the voice of his love. Whatever God allowed to come our way is out of love. God doesn't hate us. In fact, look at even those that don't are not Christian, even those that are killing Christians, you know God loves them. He loves them. So his character is love. He does not in the voice of his love. So it will be somehow, it will be inadequate knowledge for a Christian to be, because you are passing through a problem and you're going to say that God doesn't love you. No, it's a big mistake. God will never cease loving us. He cares for us because his character is love. In Psalm chapter 139, verse, verse 7 through verse 12, and when you read Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, you, 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 you find out that God is omnipresent. I would just only want to read Psalm chapter 139. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. We'll start reading from verse, verse 7, verse 7, verse 12, two verse 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make a bed in the depth, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, 
Surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night, the night will shine like a day, for darkness is as light to you. So God is omnipresent. We have to know that. We saw God as a communicator. We also saw God, saw, saw God as a, a, a God that is a spirit. But again, God also is omnipresent. Wherever you go, wherever you are, wherever you run to, God sees you. He's everywhere at every time. And that's what the psalmist said. Even when you go to the deep of the sea, God is there. When he said, let darkness cover me, God sees. God is there. Darkness to God is like light. So I want to say this, that it will be like lack of knowledge of God that you want to commit sin and you go and hide. You go and hide. Well, you can hide from people, but God is seeing you. You can't hide from God. You can't hide from God. In fact, a lady gave me a, 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 a story many years ago. How a man of God planned with her and then took her to a different state, away from the state where they are living. And that man is, 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 was married. He's a married man. And that lady was single. So this man took the lady to a different state. And then and with a guide, and then the guys that he was, he was invited for a program. So he took her to that, uh, uh, that, that, that state. And do you know, fortunately, uh, funnily, uh, well, they were staying in the same hotel room. The man had an intention. Look at, you go, they invite you for a program, you go to preach, and then you come back to your hotel room and he wanted to sleep with that girl. And he was, this is a girl that he was, he was, he was following up as his daughter, spiritual daughter. And of course, you know, this spiritual daughter with parents and all of that, they respect. And so, but God helped that young girl. And then when the man, after he has finished the program, he came out to the hotel room and he was making some move not just to go to bed on, with, with her. God gave her courage and he said, Daddy, all the way we left the state where we are living to this place and this is your intention, do you think God is not here? Now, so, you see this man, he left his family. He went to a different state with the intention, I mean, though he went for a program, but again, he has another program, the second program, to mess up with that young girl. If this man really know God very well, he knows that whether he does it in the state where he lives or in a different state, in fact, even when he fled to America and, 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 he, and he does it there, he's going to there. God is omnipresence. He's everywhere. And that is why the Sammy David, having a full knowledge of God, he said, where can I run to? If I say, let the darkness cover me, yeah, you are there. And so, God is omnipresent. But when people don't know God, they will try to hide. Well, you can hide from your fellow colleague. Your father was a man. They cheat on their wives. They will live away to a distant place and mess up their... Yes, your wife does not know. Your husband does not know. But God knows. He sees. And that's the point. So when you know the God very well, you'll be able to... There is nothing you can do. There is nowhere you can hide that God cannot see. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He is with a believer over there in China, in Ecolo, in Nigeria, in Togo, all over the world. God is omnipresent. All of creation is limited by time and space. God alone is, is unlimited. As the creator, he is unlimited. Therefore, he is not limited by time. God is not limited by time. God is not limited by space or anything else within creation. God is not limited. I have to understand that. Think of this in terms of Satan. At any given moment, how many Christians from many different countries are all at the same time blaming Satan for, some, for, for something in their lives. He's created. He's a created being. Who is not omnipresent? We should want to understand that. Please. I know many Christians know that. Some don't know. But Satan is never omnipresent because he's created. He's created. 
He is not omnipresent. He is not omnipotent. And he is not omniscient. He only oppressed through his demons and all of that. But God is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. And he is omniscient. So all knowing God. And then God is a trinity. That's another aspect I wanted to touch. God is in a, a trinity. God is a trinity. One God, but three persons who are in one God. And this is a, do a doctrine that Muslims don't want to hear. But whether they believe it or not, whether they want it or not, God is a trinity. The doctrine of trinity is hardly believed by many, but that's a reality. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said that the paraclete who will be sent, this time, is, this, this was used in a legal, uh, in a, in a legal setting. A paraclete uh, simply means an advocate, a representative. One who will come forward in behalf of another person to represent him. And he said, so Jesus in, in, in John 14, verse 16, said the palace of the Holy Spirit will come. And then in John, in first John chapter 2, verse 1, Jesus himself termed our you know, uh, is, is term our substitute, he's, he's our, uh, our, our representative, he came to, 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 to save us, to, to, to defend us, to, 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 to rescue us. We see that also in, in John. So we see, we see the, the, the term Trinity being described as God the Father, God the Son, and, and God the Holy Spirit. But the bottom line of this, the scripture is clear, as it's referred to God the Father, that's, that's the, the bottom line now. In the notion, I do, I, 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 we see so God the Father, and we see God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the one unique thing is that they are not contradictory. They work in a uniform body. Because God alone existed before everything and everyone else, he is greater than all. So before we emphasize this point, we saw God, God as a trinity God, we saw him, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he has a different dimension that he operates. But that is not the focus. But we just mentioned this, God as a God of Trinity. Now, we saw God alone, God alone existed before everything and everyone else. He is greater than all. God existed before everything, before anything that was, was created. God is greater than all. He is greater than everything. God is greater than all. It will be a big mistake when we begin to compare God with our situation. And some will go further and begin to compare God with powers, with, with Satan and all of that. God is all power, powerful. He has a supreme authority. The entire universe and everything in it, including spiritual powers, are subject to God's authority. None of them can withstand God. So we have to have that clear understanding. Before many, you see many Christians begin to equate God with powers, with demons and with, with spiritual, with, with spiritual, with, with spirits, that's a big mistake. God is all powerful. No, nothing, nothing in this world can contain with God. I think if we were, uh, no, so when, when, I think if we, we, we have to really do ourselves good, is to believe that God is in, in control. Devil doesn't have power to. To do the opposite, what God has planned at all. If God permits it, there's a reason. So please understand this that God is all powerful. He's all powerful. So, how do we view how about, about Satan? You see, what about our view about Satan? What is our view about Satan? Is there really a battle going on between God and Satan? I want to get it clear. Is there really a battle going on between God and Satan? No. I can tell you no. Some, some Christians or some people will look at as if God and Satan are into battle or Jesus and Satan are into battle. Never. The battle has been won. The battle has been won. 
The battle is rather between Satan and believers. I'm not, I'm not with God at all. The, Satan cannot even hear that. The scriptures speak of the, of, of the battle going on within us and between the flesh and the spirit. That one is very clear. Satan walks around like a rolling lion seeking for, for someone he will devour. Seeking for someone he will deceive. But, God, but from, from, from God's perspective, is there really a battle going on between Satan? God and Satan? Never. The Bible says you move like a rolling lion seeking for whom you divorce. You divorce. So, so the battle is between Satan and, and, and Christian and not between God as, is a certain matter. So please understand that when you, many Christians are making that mistake, God is, is supreme. He's supreme. He's a supreme God. No, Satan is already defeated. Understand this. In Psalm chapter 147, verse 1 to 9, and then Psalm chapter 148, verse 1 to 13, you discover that, they, look, Satan is already defeated. We don't have time to read that. But when you read that, you will discover that Satan is already defeated. There's no one and nothing that can be compared with God. No one and nothing can be compared with God. No power, no authority, no kingdom, no throne. No principality can be compared with God. Not at all. To a big mistake. He is far greater than everything and everyone. God is far greater than everything than, and, and everyone. God is greater than anything you can think of. God is greater than any powerful man you can think of. God is greater than all. He is beyond our understanding. God is beyond our understanding. What God wants us to know is the word. He wants us to know he has revealed it to us through the word of God. To his word. So God is all powerful. His word knowing. His own presence. His own importance. God is a powerful God. We can't comprehend. What can, we can't understand who really God is. The depth of God. But except through the word. And that is why we are handling this, this series on knowing God. When we know God, our relationship with him will be better. But when we don't know him, we will live the Christian life in bitterness, in sorrow, in trouble, in complaints. It is hard to foretell. It is hard to understand. But that's the reality. What we just need to do is to believe. One who sees everything, but because he's a spirit, you cannot see him. He sees us. Wherever we are healing now, whatever we are doing now, God is seeing you. You can't see him. That's the magnitude of our God. How we can reside in heaven, and yet he's everywhere. He reside in heaven, but he's everywhere. Can you see this? Can you really understand this? So can you trust that God to do whatever we are expecting him to do for you? He's in everywhere. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He sees. He controls. He controls your life, your affairs. Imagine this God. And we talk about Trinity and we saw that three persons are in one God. Very, very hard to understand. We say this. But it's a knowledge. This one is a reality from the scripture. Anytime that you are not still, it should be evident of from our heart that we don't know God. Sometimes we are agitated. Sometimes we are troubled. And you know what? God understands our humanity. He understands our lapses. He understands our struggles. But I tell you, and you continue to be patient with us. But when we understand who God is, really, we'll be able to trust him. We'll be able to have a close and a deeper relationship with him. Because God is the only one that was there before all things. And only him that has the authority. Because, you know, in Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And do you know what? He created, he created heaven and earth, but he existed before the work of creation began. We said it before. So, so before the very beginning, God existed. He existed and then he doesn't have an end. He will continue to exist. And we said before that there will no be, never be a time when God will, will cease to exist. There will never, never be a time. He will continue to exist. And so imagine this God. And that's the God we are serving. 
who is our creator. If that God is so powerful, if that God is so, is so concerned, is full of love, he cares. Tell, tell me one thing that he cannot be able to do for us. We have to understand that truth. And we have to believe him. We have to hold him by his word. As human beings, because we are so finite and unknowing, without an eye's weakness, we can't even figure out the truth for ourselves. We are limited. We are limited. Based on our knowledge, we can't figure the truth. But through the Spirit of God, God has revealed that truth as we approach His Word. With an open mind, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to us who this God is. The God we are serving. And that's what we are talking about. And that's why we are taking these lessons. Knowing God's lessons. And so, as I said from the onset, as we unveil, we begin to see God clearer and clearer, deeper and deeper. And when we understand who he is, it will draw us to having an intimate relationship with him. And that, that, and that is what the Christian life is all about. The Christian life is a life of relationship and not, and, 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 and not a religion. The, the mistake many of us, many Christians are making today, we see the Christian life like a religion. We live it as a religion. It's a big mistake. It's never a religion. Through the ages, man in his ignorance and pride has tried to come up with many theories concerning the beginning of the universe. Out of ignorance, there are propounded theories, many theories, that try to contradict the creation story. This is a mistake. All these theories are provided by men, and these men were created by God. And so God, nobody can foretell this, nobody can understand this. God is, is, was there before the very beginning, so he, 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 he created the world. We just came in and made a war. But again, we have to understand this very clearly. But by the time we begin to use human knowledge to understand the plan of God, we begin to use our, our intellectual, uh, whatever we can, we can call it, to, to understand God, we mess it up. We mess it up. But when we allow the Spirit of God to reveal to us who God is through His word, we we'll understand and we we'll know Him better. And when we know him better, we have a very close relationship with God. In closing, I don't know how much you know God. I don't know how deep your relationship is with God. Remember we said God is eternal. We mentioned this. And then he is a communicator. He communicated this. And how did he do it? Through the world. Friends, we have to understand this reality. We have to understand this truth and we have to accept it by faith and believe it and walk by it. That even if the world turns upside down, that even if people don't understand, but you as a child of God that has a deeper knowledge of who God is, you know, you, you, you have to just we believe him and, 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 and we take him by his word. How much do you know God? How do you seek to know him and to grow? How often? Why is growing with God knowledge is very, very important? It is because it will help smoothen our relationship with God. But when you don't know him, the tendency to keep complaining is unavoidable. How much of God do you know? As a Christian, you go to church, you are saved. But your action your behavior through some things as if you don't know that God. In the, in the, during the introductory aspect, I think I say this. That many, we have Christians saying that God has fear. God has disappointed me. God has abandoned me. That's not true. It shows how shallow we are as regards to our knowledge about God. But if you truly know God, through what he has revealed to us in the Bible. Even if somebody tells you that God does not exist or God has abandoned you, you will not believe it. For the fact that you pray 
or you are trusting God, and then the answer does not come immediately, it does not mean that God has abandoned you. I want to round up with this testimony. When we are serving in Togo as missionary, you know, a young university graduate gave a testimony about his failure. But you know, many Christians today don't testify about their failure. No. When God has done something good, that's when we know that God is going to praise the Lord. We shout and say, yeah, praise the Lord. I have a testimony to give. God has done this. God has done this. God has done this. But in our church in Lometogo, we were serving as missionaries. This university graduate wrote an exam. Actually, in Togo, when with the government, when you want to be employed as a teacher with the government, even after your graduation, you will write an examination. That whereby, uh, you know, you know, when you, you, you pass or whatever, whatever you, you be, now you'll be employed. So this guy went and wrote the exam. But when he wrote the exam, when the result came out, he didn't pass. And so this guy came and met me and said, Pastor, I want to give a testimony. Well, normally we have a session where people give testimony. And then when this young guy stood up to testify, he said, you want to thank God. And that was before the church. Didn't just have it. I said, you want to thank God that he wrote exam to be employed as a teacher, but he failed the exam. He didn't pass. You want to thank God that he failed the exam. And he knows that it is not God's time for him. When it is God's time for him, he will definitely get the job. And I wonder, this is a young convert that hasn't uh, stayed long in the faith. But see his understanding of God. That even in failing his exam, he has the courage to come and testify before God's people and before God. That he's thanking God. He wants to testify that he will examine his fear. Can you testify even in your failure? We only testify when the going is good. But nobody testified the negative. But let me tell you, whether you pass or you fail, God is God. We are failure and we are passing does not change God at all. You have to understand this. How many of us, how much God do you know? Can you still hold on to God? That even when you trust him for something and that thing does not work, can you still trust on him? Can you still depend on him and believe that he's, 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 he's in control? Can you still do that? Take a challenge from this university student, graduate from uh, in Togo. That even in his failure, that he wrote an exam and he failed and he was testifying. He testified, our God is faithful. Our God is in control. Our God controls the affairs of men. For the fact that life does not go the way you plan does not mean that God is not God. God ha has never failed. He has never ceased to exist. But when you see God, is only God. When the going is good, then there's a problem. He's in control. I encourage you. And I challenge us, all of, all of us, that we need to trust in God. We need to believe in Him through His word. He has promised He will never fail. He doesn't fail. Who's one we pick? This, the, the girl I gave you a story about was going to the chapel to challenge God. Why did her father die? Or this university graduate that even when he fell his exam, he was thanking God. Can you thank God in a time of difficulties? Can you still trust God? What is happening with our youth today? Because of the fear of Boko Haram and the they are going back to the traditional worship, to inquire power. Does that mean that our God cannot support us? Does that mean that God cannot, cannot deliver? He can. Do you know why he's living it? In the, oh, let me tell you, the Boko Haram, where everybody are hiding in their jungles, God is seeing them. The Fulani, the Fulani Hesmen, where everybody are hiding, God is seeing them. Do you know that God can control them? God can expose them. God is living them for a purpose. So friends, I don't know the way you see God. I don't know the way you understand God. But I want to encourage you. Understand that God is full of love. He created you for a purpose. God has a plan. 
God is eternal. And he has revealed that plan through his word. The psalmist has that knowledge in Psalm 139. God is everywhere. Where can I run to? Where can I hide? There's nothing I can do. That he said, even when he said, I let the darkness cover him. He said to God, the darkness is light. What is your knowledge of God? How much God do you know? Are you in true relationship with him? Only God that can give us a true knowledge of him. Through his word. He has revealed that to us. I pray that you have that deeper knowledge of God. And trust him. Shall we pray? Father, we are so delighted. We are so grateful. Thank you so much. Because you have blessed us. You have revealed to us that you are eternal God. You have revealed to us that you never change. Please help us to trust you. Help us to believe you. Help us to depend on you. Help us to rely on you. No matter what happens, that will not give up. As you continue to study this series, knowing God's God series, that you unveil to us who you, who you are and so that we can have a deeper relationship with you. Thank you for answering prayer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.